Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. I have a door here from a client that needs me to do a restore it and fix it job on it. What it is is it's a door from an outdoor barbecue sort of entertaining area. They have a refrigerator hiding underneath the barbecue and it has uh, this teak door used to cover up the refrigerator but you can see there's a couple parts missing to it. Now this teak was actually taken from uh, the client's grandmother's furniture of some kind had been taken apart and then the son made this door and it actually has his company logo CNC'd on the front so it's actually kind of a nice thing. Uh, you can see that I've already sanded this. I did a demo of the Festool RO90 sander over the weekend and I used this to test it out versus say the DTS 400 sander and, and uh, I have to say after sanding all day Sunday this and then another project that I, I started uh, that's a, a fantastic sander. But uh, getting back to this, now my problem is <clears throat> they had already had this thing done. It was up on their fridge and apparently it broke. Well then they had some guy doing some simple repairs at their house and he offered to go ahead and fix it for them. Well the way that he fixed it, I can't tell what was done originally and then what he done did, but there's basically large mortises board in all the, all the, all the intersections of the rails and styles and then they were plugged with what looks like hardboard and then they were uh, biscuit joined together and then uh, unfortunately he shot just a ton of nails besides using a lot of polyurethane glue. Uh, that's the repair part I can tell is the nails and the glue. So what ended up happening, you can see there's a tidbit of some glue up here so it's fixed into this style. I can't take it out of this style. There's a little bit of glue that's squeezed out in there, something like that. Plus also he shot about uh, 15 nails through the panel and through the stop. So I can't take this out without really doing a lot of damage. And obviously I don't have any teak like this to go in and fix it with. So it looks like because of this glue here, when this panel expanded, it pulled it out of this side. And why the other style came out, I don't really know. But uh, the biscuits look in terrible shape. So what my options are for fixing this is why I'm making a simple recording. This might end up coming up for you, and there's a couple different ways to tackle it. Now I would like to, obviously I would like to just take a domino. I'm going to use, I'd use SIPO dominoes because this is going to be going outside. And then just, you know, trim off the biscuit, pop a domino in. That's really easy to do on this separate style. And on the other, the separate rail that got pulled out, Actually, that's sort of something else that you should take a look at. He's got some, uh, he put sort of a backer rod in there. Now I know that that's sort of center of the panel. You know, in a way, this is like his version of space balls, which is cool. I don't care about that. But then there's also a whole slew of nails. I already pulled out most of them. But there's still another six that I just got tired of pulling nails. Uh, so I think what happened is he was putting those in to help maybe center it. I'm not sure. And then for some reason missed on this one and actually went through the panel. I don't really know. Anyway. <clears throat> So for these, I could very easily put the dominoes in. And I could do it on this end of this rail back here because I have full access to that end. Now the problem is over here. I can't take this panel out. I already tried to wiggle it out and see if I could come up with a way to pull the pins, but the only reason I can pull the pins out of these boards is because I can get into the groove and pull them out from the inside. But I don't have any access to it over here. So I can't get the domino to plunge a hole anywhere other than off the edge. So how am I going to go ahead and fix this? Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just make a domino style hole on this end and then I could do the rest of it with regular dominoes and I think it'll be plenty strong. And also, you know, I will pin those, although I'm not going to pin the panel. <laughs> so how I'm going to go ahead and fix this? What I'm going to use is I'm going to use a drilling jig. Now this is the uh, drilling jig from Bridge City. There are a number of other different ones available, but uh, this happens to be the one that I use. And what it does is it'll automatically center over top of whatever you're putting this on. Now the reason I'm going to use this is that what it does is it uses these different guide bushings. Now I'm going to use, for, for using an 8mm domino, I can pretty much use a 5 16 drill bit. And it's going to be a snug fit. I'll have to do a little bit of pairing anyway after I drill the holes to create the mortise. So I have a 5 16 drilling bushing in here. So basically this drill bit can go in there and it can't wiggle at all. So when I go to run this drill bit, it's going to go straight down. I don't have to worry about coming out the side, going crooked, anything like that. And it's also going to be centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this jig, put it on there, have it center. You just clamp it into place, and then you drill the hole. 
And then of course you're just going to drill a small series of holes until you get it exactly fitted to a domino. Now, the other problem is getting this close to the edge of the panel. Now, using the C12 drill, I can use the 90 millimeter or the 90 degree chuck to get right up to it. I could also use the eccentric chuck, which actually would be a little bit more convenient, so I think I will opt to do that instead. Afterwards, I'll just take a little bit of chiseling to pare out the sides to get rid of the little scallops and uh, get that domino fitted in there. Then after that, all the rest is just simple dominoes, some glue, and then after that I can finally get to finishing this thing. Okay, so we got you in a little bit tighter here so you can see how this repair is going to go. It's not a, a, a huge deal, but it might be some useful ideas for something you might have to repair. So giving you a little bit more of a close-up of how this uh, drilling jig works, it uh, happens to have two bushings that you can put in arbitrarily. You just loosen this up and then the bushing slides right out. And all the bushings are the same diameter, it's just the hole in the middle is what's different. So uh, it turns out that I only have, I have actually the the 8 and the 10 millimeter drilling bushings, but I actually for a change I don't have any metric bits. For once I wish I had the Centrotech metric set. So what it is is I put the 5 16 bit uh, bushing in here. Uh, the other one's a quarter inch from one something I was doing before. And what I'll do is I'll end up placing it on here. But first I need to know what my depth is going to be. For that I'm just going to use, you could use a stop collar on this drill bit, but it's going to be so much easier just simply to stick this thing through until you have 25 millimeters, I'm going to be using the 50 millimeter domino. So you got the 25 millimeters sticking out. That's good right there. And then you pop a piece of blue tape on there. All I care about is go down until the blue tape hits the top of the drill bushing. And that'll be, uh, that's uh, going to be my poor man's depth stop. I have some depth stops, but why bother? Alright, so we got that ready. Pop this onto the uh, C12 drill. Just let me get that to be dead vertical so I can be out of the way. And then we can put this drilling jig on there for the first hole. And then we'll have to, after we take it off, we'll be able to set the second hole. Now I like to use a clamp on here just to make sure it's going to not want to wiggle free on me. It does have some screws that you can tighten up here to keep it from, uh, for the clamp to let, not let go. but give it a little extra support. Alright, well, let me uh, set this so you can see the drilling. I'll slide this over to the other edge. Now let's go. That's some chunky, crusty stuff. I swear it's hardboard that they filled it with. Whoops. I should tighten that after I show it to you. So we got the one hole made. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 50 millimeter domino. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put it here and we're going to mark how much further I got to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look down through the hole for lining up this hole. Once I have the second one on, we're golden. All right, right to the edge. That should be about right. Dead on. All right. So all I would need to do now, if I wanted to, is pare this little piece off, but I could actually just put this drilling jig in the middle and hog off most of it. So let's do that. I will admit, this one here though, the, um, the bushings, you gotta really crank down on them if you wanna leave them there. It's partly because they wanna allow you to be able to double stack them if you're using, say, a hand brace. But, uh, you know, the power drill also, uh, <laughs> it probably works a little harder than, let's see, I do this one by hand.
So what I did on the last one is I used it, I held it by hand. You know, the thing kept wanting to sort of move anyway because I only had this little tiny island of wood. So as I would go down and I'd feel it move, I would just move it back and forth in a way I was sweeping it a bit like you would a router. a bit of a snug fit on the edge. So I'm just going to take this little edge off the domino. This is a fitting domino anyway. I'm going to be putting a sepal one in here. There we go. It'll go further, but I want to be able to pull that out. <laughs> so that'll be for a fairly easy fix. Now all you have to do is just use this to figure out where the domino hole needs to be that's on the rail. And I could actually use an oversized one, slightly oversized, since the strength of it is actually going to be with the pin. That'll be fine. I wanted to add an addendum to this video simply to point out a couple things that one of the things I did in a way wrong is I used a brad point bit. Now that's because this is the only bit I had in this size. If you would normally want to use, when you're using a drilling jig, you want to really use more like a spear point bit or a chisel point bit. You don't want to use a brad point. The brad itself is trying to guide that bit wherever the brad hit, right? Now in this case here, I had some really crufty crud in the bottom of that mortise and you could actually feel the bit really wanting to fight and wander. And the whole point of the drilling jig is to hold that bit steady. So if you have the bit, the brad point trying to do one thing and the drilling jig trying to do another thing, the two are going to fight, which is why you saw it wiggling a lot more than it ever normally does. So get yourself some chisel point bits definitely for that purpose. The drilling jig is very nice to have. In this case here, this one is a DJ1 from Bridge City Toolworks. It's predominantly made for hand tool use, so it's not, not made with you know super clamping jaws and and the like. In fact, these jaws are really made to hold a number of other accessories for doing some really screwball drilling that you can't believe. But uh, the thing is, is that there are a number of other drilling jigs out there uh, that would be very useful for you to use as well. There's, of course, there's something like the Dowel Max. Well, the Dowel Max is actually the same price as this, so it's not getting you anywhere cheaper. Uh, but it does do the same type of functionality where it's going to try centering a mortise on there and it's going to give you drilling bushings to be able to make those holes. Another option is you can see them all over the place. You know, they're probably the typical Chinese knockoffs, right? They're basically something to help you center uh, some drilling bushings, and then you can use your drill to just plow some holes or whatever you're going to do, whether you're going to do dowel joinery by using some, some dowel centers, or if you just want to make a progression so you can have something basically drilling the mortise for you. Those are going to be very, very useful, especially in a goofy case like this, where you need to almost retrofit something that's been partially assembled. You know, that might get you out of a jam, when you're in the middle of assembling something and you realize you glued a few things and you still need a mortise somewhere that's awkward to get at, well, don't go tearing something apart when you can simply put a mortise. It may not be the way you would wanted to do it from the start, but it's certainly a good fix. And uh, since I got this drilling jig, I've used it way more times than I ever expected. So it definitely comes in handy when it wants to get you out of a bind, but it's also very, very useful in a number of cases where you're trying to drill something that is just very awkward to drill. Like if you're trying to drill a four inch hole down a one by one leg, you know, it's, it's too easy to, to wander and drift. And if you did that, you'd have this big long leg sticking out a little crooked. So things like that, a drilling jig can really help you out. Even those inexpensive ones can definitely be useful. So maybe consider one of those for your arsenal. When I was using the drilling jig, one of the things that you normally want to use with those is not to use a brad tip uh, drill. Now, I happen to have only a brad pit drill, <laughs> brad pit, 